when uh, Charlie and I were here in 1916, not a year ago. My second trip. My second trip, yeah. Uh, we met in some of the buildings, all right? So this is what we're going to talk on. Curtis, uh, last year when we were trying to figure out what to do this year, we asked Curtis to do Carson City. And I told Curtis, I, I got some sketches there. Maybe I can help you. And I didn't realize uh, how much work it was going to be. <laughs> but anyway, Curtis did an excellent job on presenting Carson City. And what we're going to talk about today, basically, I don't have any handouts. This is all in my head, OK, which is bad. Uh, but we're going to talk about how we got to some of these buildings. And thank goodness, sir, the ICC in 1914, they came out and required the railroads to do evaluation of all the railroads. And the SP uh, came up in about 1915 and started doing the evaluations. Some of the sketches I have are dated uh, 9 23 1916. So that's about 100 years ago from you know last month. So this stuff is 100 years old. And you know, when, you, when you're doing something, you say, who will care 100 years from now? Well, I did. <laughs> and I, you know, you, you get into it, and you get into a, a corner, because they give you so much, and then they don't give you anything else. So then you've got to start looking. And that's what we've done. Uh, hopefully you can see some of this stuff. I had some problems with the computer. Uh, I want to take it over to, uh, take some stuff over to get it printed. And the guy says, oh, DXF, or D yeah, DXF, right? Which is AutoCAD. He says, we don't do that anymore. It's all PDF now. Oh, so what you see on the slide walls here, you can't read the number of the lettering or the names on it because the PDF didn't pick it up. Anyway, so let's go ahead and see what we got here. If I go to the right, it should move. On the arrow, no, down lower. Down lower. The green circle. The green circle, that right. Yeah, right. There, you there go. we go. Your other right. All right. Uh, two cars were arranged as a sleeper, workroom, and <coughs> diner for the valuation crew, which was the SP group. So we have number eight on top. At this time, it uh, didn't. It had still had the side door. The side door wasn't replaced until 1923 uh, with that little window. Coach 10, and then the evaluation office, which what became the evaluation office, which was the uh, Sierra Wooden Metal Lumber Company's office, this Carson office originally, uh, became their evaluation office. So these are the basic the three things they used. Uh, and this started in June 1 of 1915. Uh, so this is what they were using to run around the BET and do all the measurements. All the maps that you've seen uh, came from that. And, and uh, the drawings that we'll, we'll see here came from this piece of information. I don't know, can you guys see over here on the side? So what we're going to do, we're going to look. This is a map that they came up with. Uh, we're going to talk about the tin shop, the boiler shop, the uh, paint shop, okay, and the freight depot over here, or the freight depot, yeah, right here. And there's a little building in here, right here, next to the valuation office. If I get time, we'll talk about that too, because that, that came up interesting. Somebody asked about the corral. There's the corral. Here's this. Uh, the uh, Derrick House. The Flander House is back over here. Here's part of the material yard, and here's the rest of the material yard back in this area. And that's what Curtis is discussing. Of course, the depot, oh, here's the motor car house. There's the oil tank that came up there. And then here's the, uh, where's the passenger depot? Down. There you go. <laughs> right here, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And the water tank's right here, for those that asked about where the water tank was. Okay, mid the branch coming down this way. Okay, Virginia City going up this way. Uh, Reno going that way. Okay, Carson City Freight Depot. 
I uh, was moved from Steamboat in 1872, lengthened to 151 feet by 32 feet wide, uh, late 1880, burned by arses on December 31, 1962. And this came from our telegraph issue that Stephen put out to number what? Issue number 23, okay? <coughs> so, on the left, you have the ICC information on <coughs> the various buildings. And this information that you have here, whoops, I'm sorry, got to go back, is all uh, from, my, uh, from the UNR, and also Kent has this on his website. So you can get all this information off of Kent's website. Uh, so here's, here's a good layout of the freight depot. Uh, gives you a good, uh, uh, you know, dry, here's the main office, here's a storeroom. Here's a second room above that storeroom. There's an office over here, and this is, I would presume, would be the guys that came to pick up the stuff. Here's three doors here, the three freight doors, and you have three freight doors there. The track would go on this side, go out, and this side would be where you would unload your product or pick up your product if you were coming in. So this is a, a pretty good drawing of the, uh, of the freight depot. It gives them some basic information gives you the size of the post and everything else. Uh, the only thing it doesn't give me is the dimensions between the doors, okay? It doesn't tell me how far the doors are apart. And we'll see that in a few minutes here. So it goes down and gives you all the information, the size of the doors, the size of all the windows, and on down through here, all the way down, and then even the platform, okay? So it gives you a lot of that good information. Uh, this is a sketch that I found at UNR. Actually, uh, Dick Dayton found these originally and then he put them in a folder when he was working up there. So it gives you a little bit more information on how the, you know, two by tens, two by sixes, height from here to here, uh, and then the length of, of certain things. How many boards, how many of these things were the ribs, like 52 in all, uh, six by six posts on the, on the corners, you know, your studs. It even gives you a, 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 how it was put together, okay? <laughs> so kind of kind of interesting. So you take that information, and, and here's all the information on the inside. This is all came off the same sketches, okay? Um, 12 shop lights, you know, things like that, and gives you the information on the, on the various building. Platforms, here's the overhang on the platform, the platforms here. Uh, an incline of 28 feet, 16 feet, 0.6 over here, which if you measure this out, doesn't measure out to the actual length of the building, which Curtis and I ran into a problem when we were trying to lay this building out. Depot is 150 feet platform, 12 feet wide west, and 15 feet wide on the east side. So it gives you some good information. So here's your 12 foot. Gives you a little board here on the back where the, where the carts would uh, back up to it so they wouldn't run into the depot. So some good little things like that. Uh, it gives you some other pertinent information. So and gives you the here's the here's between the studs, okay, or the post. 8.4 feet. Now what they use by 8.4 feet, this was four tenths of a foot. They went measured in tenths. It's an engineering ruler, not a not a, not a carpenter's ruler in a sense. Here's a, here's your uh, framing underneath. All right. Of the, of the deck. So we go look at some pictures, okay? This is an early view of the freight loading end of it. This would be uh, the southwest view. And what's interesting is there's a little door, there's a door right here, a freight door kind of like, and you can see there's a ladder going across it, so apparently it wasn't being used. There's a window here, a window here, and there should be a door down here and, and then the freight door and a window up here, all right. <coughs> this picture uh, I found over at uh, Nevada Historical Society. We were looking, Charlie and I were over there looking through some stuff and this was a unknown location. And I looked at that thing and I said, oh, that's the west view of the uh, yeah. Carson Depot. So the guy came out and he said, oh, okay, you know where this is? I said, yeah, and so I gave it, I gave him the information. So he went and we had a crop. There's a, actually, if you looked at the whole picture of the freight barn, 
uh, the uh, barn would be back over here, which I should have got a picture of. But it gives you some better information. It looks like a little window right here in that door. Here's the other window. Here's the door going in, and here's the freight door, all right? And there's a good shot of the uh, window. Here's your fireplace, all right? We don't have a date on it, because they didn't know where it came from. And this one here actually came off of that uh, Western Nevada website, what's it called? Western Nevada Historical. Oh, the Western pictures. Historical. Yeah. yeah, the guy has some good pictures on there. And it came from, uh, he says it came from the Nevada State Library, which we need to go find it. Because I really, it's, it's, when you blow it up, you really can't do anything with it. But, but it does show the, the steps going up here on this end, okay? And there's that, there's that baggage door. But if you put the office in there, the office would come right through the middle of that baggage door somehow. And so that's a, something that we still don't know about. <coughs> oh, there's that barn. This is uh, the horse barn back here that, uh, what, who was that, Stephen? That Jack Greenall. Jack Greenall, I think. He, he, I think he had to leave, didn't he? Yeah, yeah anyway. We think we maybe found out where it went. So uh, something we've got to look into more. Mike, can you back up one the previous gentleman picture? Is there any chance that was taken while it was up at the steamboat? Before no. it was moved? Because I'm looking at the ground in front of it. Yeah. I don't know who looks here. No, the, there's a freight car right there, I think. What's the structure just to the left of that? It looks up Tigano. That might be the uh, oil. Oil building. It's oil. Yeah. It looks like an opportunity. Yeah. But that's a, that's a box car right there. All right. So it's still being used at that time. Yeah. So here it is afterwards. And uh, kind of a nice shot of it. Now this is the other end. This is the east view. And here you can see the door going into the office. Here's the uh, freight door. There's two windows here, uh, the, the upper stairs window for the upper room, and a small window here. Okay, and here's the ramp going down on that end. And this is later because you can see part of the Carson up there, and here's your smokestack up on top. There's another shot of it after, I think, after the abandonment. Notice that the window's gone here, all right? And here's your ramp coming down. So you take this information and you try to figure out how how the windows are from the ground. A lot of them were like 36 inches from what I found on other drawings, okay? Uh, and here's a shot of it later. And uh, Curtis, here's that, here's that fuel station we were talking yeah, about. The shell. That's the shell? I think so. Okay, so this is the shell station that's on the Sanborn map. So I couldn't figure out what that was. But apparently it's the Shell Station. Here's the Capitol. Mike? No, the Shell no. is down around 7th Street. Huh? The shell is down around 7th Street. Yeah, that, that's what we said. I think there's two. He thought there were two. I thought it might be a Richfield. <laughs> but it, but it, that's more of a yellow truck. Richfield didn't take any one. Mike, I, I think in 55. The Shell is yellow. Sam yeah. Sam called it the Shell, of course. You know, Sam Ward called it Shell? I believe so. Okay. Anyway, I, I didn't know, and I don't have the Sandmore map, so. But I thought that's kind of interesting. It's here because in, the, in later pictures, you'll see a couple of tank cars sitting right over here. So apparently they unloaded from here and went over there. Something that uh, Paul's going to work on here for a presentation on the road. Right, Paul? Correct. <laughs> uh, Jack, Jack Museum, I know him as Jack, took this photo. 61, Steve? Oh, I think it's mid-50s. Mid-50s? Yeah. All right, they were just starting to board it up for the uh, Nugget. The Nugget had bought it, and they were going to board it up. This is about the only picture you see of the front of this building, believe it or not. Here's one freight door. Here's the other freight door. And you can't really see over here too much because they're starting to board it in. And that's about the only picture that we know of of, that, of the whole front of that building. So. Stephen gave me a bunch of the photographs. Okay, uh, where, do you, where are the doors? Well, here's that one window, a small window. Here's a door right there, all right? There's a door here, just off the end. There's a door over here. 
Uh, over here, I think one of these pictures, we you can see the 1 by 12 on the bottom, and where the rafters come down, there was a 1 by 8 that went all the way across, okay? And it tied into the top of the doors right here. You see, here's the rafters. So this is what you're looking for, okay? And trying to make up these drawings is the detail of particular things that you can't get, you know, can't measure today. And here's some more pictures. I don't know why these guys took all these pictures of this crazy little baggage car, which I've never seen before. Uh, <laughs> here's the height of the door going up. These doors went up into the roof. They didn't slide sideways. They went up and down. So here you can see how the rafters are right into the top of the of the door frame. Uh, and here's a door here, here's a door here. So based on this, uh, I came out, I figured the doors were about 42 feet apart, which kind of measures out. So here we are, here's 42 feet apart. That's that drawing right over there. And uh, this is what Curtis, I gave to Curtis so he could, he could make up the depot, okay? I uh, still have work to do on it. And here's what Curtis came up with based on that information for his little presentation there, which I thought was a fantastic presentation, Curtis. All right, the Carson City Oil House was built in 1887, uh, 18 by 56 feet, 16 feet to the east, 10 inch projection, sealed building was two story, uh, G slash four shingle roof, one inch common shingle, two by four, uh, 24 inch centers, Studs, that would be two by six inch ties, six feet center to center, 35 linear feet, uh, one by six bracing between each tie and rafter. Walls are batten board, uh, four by four posts, 33.6 inches uh, centered, one line of four by four grits, wall plates, four by four. So this is what you get off of the ICC information. And that's basically what you're seeing over here, okay? And then we get into the sketches. Uh, here's a sketch of the oil house. It gives you a pretty good view of the end, okay? And here's the double deck. And, but it doesn't show you where the windows are, okay? And what I did, I wrote all this information down on this side. So you, if you can't read this information over here, I have graphics anyway. And uh, so that's what we have here. And on the back side of the sheet, here was the back side of the building. It had, or, yeah, no, the front side, I'm sorry, the front side of the building. It had two little platforms coming out on the front here. So here's what, here's basically what I got off the sketch. Here's the end of the building, here's the length of the building, the width, and here's those two little platforms. Now there would be a door here, a door here, a door right here, okay? Why they didn't have a platform here, I don't know. But this is 1916. North is that way. So this would have been facing up towards uh, Reno, okay? So the tracks would be out this way. <clears throat> Looking at photographs, we can see that the windows are halfway up between the two floors for some reason. So you didn't have a window up above, and you didn't have a window down below, but they, they uh, went in between the two floors. Here's your first door, here's your second door, and here's a door up here with a winch, or a block and tackle, so they can pick up something here, take it up and store it upstairs, okay? So basically drums, oil, uh, by -pro uh, lubricating products for the locomotives and things like that. So this is basically the building, and here's another view, of pretty good view of the, of the doors, okay, which I was able to use, and where the windows fit in, in proportion to the doors. And, uh, there's that two platforms right next to the track. So the car would come up, they'd unload the product onto the platform, pick it up with the with the block and tackle, and take it upstairs. That's it. What's interesting in, in the in the 16 report or another sheet of paper, it talked about how black the wood was, and I was surprised. You know, it was pretty well rotted with oil, and, and a lot of the timbers were rotted even in 1950 when the. Patrick Allen went through and, and measured a lot of this stuff for the uh, when they were abandoning the railroad. Uh, it talked about how rotten the wood was and how black it was, and you know they wouldn't be able to sell that wood because of that. I was surprised this building never burned down. 
So here's a picture of it, a uh, window on this end. Uh, Curtis thinks there's a window on this end. At this time, at this time in 1916, there was no window on the other end. But we'll show you a picture of it here in a minute. Here's those uh, windows kind of boarded up at this time, not being used. Here's that block and tackle, shingle roof. There's another picture of it with a paint shop in the background uh, after the line was being abandoned. So it was still there in 1950 after the railroad was abandoned. So here's what I came up with based on that information and that drawing is over there someplace. All right. We go to the paint shop, okay, 1877 to 1946. So the paint shop was abandoned in 1946, but it did last until the end of, uh, you know, it was still there in 1950. Nice little detail on the ICC report here of the sliding doors. These doors slid, uh, there was two doors, okay, so one slid this way and the other slid that way. And this information goes from here over to this side about to here. And here's a sketch of it. This sketch was really it was very faint. Uh, I've lost some of the, you know, some of the, because these, I got these back in the uh, 70s, I guess, when I was up at UNR, and so it, some of them had faded out. So what I did, I went and did, took this information and drew it up here for you to show you what it would look like. Here shows a window here, and that's a bigger window, taller window than the other ones. Gives you the height of between all the studs and all the uh, side sideboards and the rafter layout. Okay, and here's that end door, which wasn't on this sketch, but I picked this up off of that other drawing. Okay, so this will this will be the end door. Now, if you notice, oh, oh, yeah, you know what? There's a shed on the side on the back side of this building on the north side of it. By golly, it doesn't show up, you know, in the pictures. And it was a little shed that came out and had a little step down there, and it had some windows in it. All right, well, okay, it has a window. So, based on the information that we could find, here I drew in a couple of windows, you know, which we don't know where they, where they were, really. Here's, here it is in what? What year, Stephen? 1870? Sometime with the Dayton. With the Dayton, yeah. This is the earliest picture we have of this building. Note the arch. All right, but the door is squared, okay, off at the top. Note the brace over here on the side, okay. Here it is uh, in the 30s. You know, the windows were still being opened at this time. They weren't boarded up like they are later. Here's a door right here, okay. And you got one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows in between the door. So this is what you look for. You look for something like that. The guy took a picture of the car and not, you know, the, the, the building just happened to be in the background. So here, here's a better picture. This is a better picture. Somebody actually took a photograph of the building. You know, kind of neat. Here, here's the switch. Here's the door. Here's, you know what this is? It's not the outhouse. It's a hose house. You know, we talked about hose houses. I think Curtis mentioned hose houses up at uh, Virginia City that they had them all around. They had these things in the yard, all around in the yard, okay? And Curtis, you had some of these on your, on your, on your uh, layout there. They were the really small specs. Yeah. And here's a pipe, back up here, a vent pipe, okay? Uh, close up of that door, which I wanted to get some of the detail of it in the drawing. How high was the window from the ground, since this is a real tall window? Another shot, this is the other end of it. So the doors on both ends, it was a run-through building at one time, and then they took it, uh, they cut the switch off at the other end. So both ends are basically the same, all right? Here's a brace here, all right? Nothing on the, on the back side though, you know? Oh, here, yeah, okay. Uh, here's a color, nice, nice uh, slide. I think this was Richard Dakin's slide uh, taken back. And here's that brace that you see. And here, here's the uh, oil house, and if you ba basically you can see where the other window used to be up here before it was boarded out. Curtis pointed that out to me. Uh -huh. And this is a nice shot of it, nice paint shot. This is the uh, sand house, and by this time, which we found out had a tin roof, 
Uh, originally in the ICC report, it was a shingle roof. So about sometime between 1916 and 1950, you got a, you got a tin roof. Uh, here's that uh, hose house. Here's an oil tank back here. And here's the end of the paint shop here. So looking, you know, I'm looking for that shed. Where's that shed? Well, Stephen happened to have this photograph here. And basically right over here, you can see a little bit of the shed. Here it is right here. And that looks like a window, end of a window right there. There's that brace coming down. And there's a little bit of a window. Well, we found this photograph. And we never did find the photograph, but we had a Xerox copy of it. You blow it up, and here's that window. So I put an arrow to it, and there's, a sh there's that little shed there. And here's a good shot of the inside. You can see that door, and it goes all the way up. And actually, if you get a good view of it, you can even see the uh, hangers up there, uh, the rollers that are rolled on. Uh, car 13, I think, right? Yeah, that he's painting. Who's this? Is this? It's one of their engineers. One of the engineers. But it didn't, wasn't out on the engine. So this is basically what I came up with. And this is the one we had in the last issue, or two issues ago, I think, of the, uh, of the uh, telegraph. By golly, I, I picked up this photograph off of eBay with a bunch of others, and look what I found. By golly, there's that doggone shit. Wow. Wow, look at that. There's that window. Now, you see the... Uh, it looks like it's a little bit higher, but it looks like the trim comes out a little bit lower, too. All right? So, you know, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, that's why, you know, things evolve. And someday we might find somebody that walked around the back of that thing and took a picture of it. It'll be a Polaroid, though. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what Curtis came up with. All right? Beautiful, beautiful job that Curtis did on this building. There's the shed, okay? And we don't know what's back here, but all it did tell us, give us some information. So basically, this is what we came up with. And there, here's that stove pipe, which we don't know where it's at, but it's up there someplace. <laughs> Someday we might find it. All right, tin shop, 1874 to 46. Same thing, ICC stuff on the left, it's all, this was 1917. These are the sketches that were done in, in 1916, okay? So it gives you the basic layout of the side. Here's the end of the building, uh, the height of it, and things like that. And it had a walkway. And there's another building back here called Material Shop. Where's the Material Shop? It's not over here on these reports. But there's a store shop here, two store buildings, uh, two story on this one, okay? These must be this building here, and another building. There's a walkway behind it. Uh, here's, here's the uh, second building behind the tin shop. It's a whole story, two story. Gives you the pertinent information. Here's the third building, by the, or the second building by the, behind the uh, tin shop. By the time they got to this building, they just did a square, and that, that, that was it. All right. So what do you come up with? Where's the tin shop? Anybody here in the tin shop in the Carson City? I wasn't there at the time. There it is, right there. That's the tin shop. That's where they, they did all the tin work, okay? Sitting right there next to the next to the engine house. Ah, oh, look at this. Here's the tin shop. Back behind it's the pattern shop. That's about the only picture we have of the pattern shop. Here's a, here's a brace going up. We think this might be part of that iron tower that was back in between these two buildings. And don't ask me about the iron tower. Uh, yeah, what about the iron tower? It was used to smash things. Look, okay, they bring up on a pulley, smash it on the ground. It's called the iron breaker. Iron breaker, yeah, there you go. Yeah, like Buckshot, right? Hey, what's this? Yeah, what's this thing here? Huh? That's a locomotive. By golly, yeah, here, but here, there's a big door, there's two windows, there's two windows over here, all right? Look at the pipes up on top of this crazy building. What is that thing, anyway? I don't know what that is. Oh, 
By golly, it's a locomotive. That's the lion. What's this over here? Orange beef. What's left of the orange beef? The, the boiler of the orange beef went into the boiler house. All right? So this is the one that remains of the orange beef. But here's the lion. Here, here's the tin shop. Uh, the, uh, the tin shop. So you got three windows here. Here's that pipe going up. And here's another picture of it later on, about 1950. Here's a, here's a 1015 off of his trucks. Here's two windows boarded up. Here's another building behind it. This must be the second building behind that building. All right, here's, we got rid of the cars here. Okay, we took them away. And here's those two buildings. Tin shop, four windows. That, these two are boarded up. And here's a blow up of that. You can see here's two windows that used to be here. It was a door right about here and the four windows. So this is what I came up with, and I think that's, uh, that's one of those drawings over there, that one. Yeah, that's that drawing right there, okay. So uh, gives you the basic dimensions of the building, uh, height of it and everything else. And here's the building behind it, the second building behind it, or the first building behind it. And then here's the little building, the other building behind it, right? And I don't have those out on the on the drawing out on the wall here. And here's what Curtis came up with uh, for the building. Both ends of it, and the door in the back, and that which we don't really know, but the, there had to be a door because it went to the other building. All right, the boiler shop. Uh, there's a nice outline of it in the ICC stuff from 1917. Here's a sketch of it that, uh, that they did and uh, gives you the basic dimensions. There's a lean-to on the back okay, of the building, or it came down and, and shows a window on this side that says opposite side, just the difference, okay? Gives you the length of the building, of the two buildings, and then they had a truss rod that going on across over here. Uh, this is probably the earliest picture of it. Here's the 18 again. And here's that building, here's the boiler shop, okay? Uh, you really don't see the uh, tin shop back here at this time. Here's a nice front view of it. Uh, two windows, big door. This is, I think, a, a rolling door. Another window. The uh, snow plow that was used on the 18 during that period of time. And a, a stack up here. This picture is kind of interesting because I always thought this was was the other end of the boiler shop, but the way it's facing, it's wrong. And Curtis and I were talking about last night. We thought, well, maybe it got turned around. But this is later later picture than that first one, so I don't know. This could have been another building. I'm not positive. We, something we have to figure out. Here's one of the Tahoes. Or, yeah, the Tahoes uh, that uh, Heather rebuilt, and uh, without the uh, without the toolbox, so this would have been the 23 or the 24, most likely. And, and here's a picture about before 1917 when they converted these cars over to, uh, to uh, sheds. And here you can see the door on the end, two windows here, and it looks like a window here, okay? I'm not sure. And the lean-to comes down here at the back of it. Uh, pretty nice shot. Here's that, here's that plow that we were just talking about. And, oh, look at this photograph. My golly, that's a window right there. And it's open part way. And if you look at it close enough, a nice shot of the 25. And the guy was taking a picture of the 25 and the, and the building just happened to show up in the background. All right, here's four pictures of the 25 with the building in the background. Here's that one that we talked about, which gives me the window thing. This one's not really too good. It's, it's uh, kind of, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, not clear, fuzzy. And look here, it looks like there's a cut in there and there's a shed back here on this end, which looks to me open. Uh, this picture is a little bit better and it comes up and it comes down off of the other building now. Uh, by this time that had been closed in uh, with wood, or I mean, uh, looks like they covered it up. And there's another shot of the building, which gives you an idea of the roof line of it, okay? So basically, what I drew originally was that that 
little shed on the end of the lean-to came right off of the building, okay? Which now I think it, it comes down below. So uh, I think I did make the changes. I'm not sure. Yeah, this was changed. Yeah, okay, I think I changed it on that drawing there. So, you know, <coughs> things, things change over time. So here's what Curtis came up with the boiler shop. And I think we think now maybe that this was the, the closed end end of it. This was only about half the length of the building. And we think this maybe was the closed end and it was open on the other. They probably kept the tubes in here, I'm thinking, for the boiler. And we don't think there was a door here now. But that could change. So whenever that guy gets around the, the back side of that building to take, take the photograph, we'll find out. <laughs> All right, well this is an interest. This is the last one. How much time we got? Got a half hour, huh? Okay. Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes, okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to put this one in there because it wasn't really pertinent to what I wanted to talk about. But um, I, I, I had the sketch of it that says wheel, wheel taper, tapper's house. And what, what is a wheel tapper? That's the guy that went around and tapped the wheel. He had a pole, he had a, a, an iron. Uh, stick or something like that, you know. And he would go around tapping wheels and things like that. And if it go ding, okay, that's fine. If it go clunk, well, that's broke. All right. We had a guy down at, at CSRM, one of our docents, and he carried around this thing with him all the time, and that's what he was. He was a wheel tapper. All right. So that's what they did. They go out and they check the cars and make sure that they that they didn't have a broken uh, wheel or, or uh, handrail or something like that. So it was called a wheel tapper sound. Now, uh, on the ICC report, it said car whacker's house, okay? Okay, car whacker's house, wheel, wheel tapper's house, same building, okay? And it had a porch on it, porch consisting of 160 BM of feet of wood, nothing else, you know. Uh, over here it says porch, 4 6 by 10 6 long, uh, 1 by 8. 12 floor, uh, three eight by 10 uh, sills, get some other boards on the, on the porch. All right, but he doesn't show the porch on the, on the drawing. He doesn't show the porch over here. Oh, look at the map, the ICC map. Here's the valuation office. Here's the car repair shop. Car repair shop, what is that? Well, here's a porch, measures out, Four four by ten three, which basically is the same building as the car whacker's house or the car or the uh, wheel whack, whacker's house. <laughs> so we think this is the building anyway. Ah, here's a beautiful shot of the yard. I think this is a Richard Dayton photo. Over here is the barn. Uh, we think we maybe have some more information on. Here is the little motor car house that, uh, for the number 23, which wasn't being used this time as a motor car house, but they had put a, a shed on the back, and I think they had a, it looked like they had a little outhouse behind it at one time, okay? Here's a freight depot back here. Here uh, is a little building that uh, Stephen had, what, issue seven, I think it is, that they brought down from Lakeview the tool house at Lakeview and blocked down right there. Here's the car repair house, and here's the valuation office, and here's two of the old CM uh, flat cars. I think these are probably the CM flat cars. So it gives you a nice view of the yard. And I think uh, Paul was asking, where did they store the, uh, the uh, Gold Coast? And I think it was right over in this area, Paul, when they had it here. Oh, by golly, here's that doggone baggage car again. I don't know why that thing gets in the way all the time. But look back here. There's that house. Here's a porch. By golly, we found something. I don't know, somebody accidentally took a picture of that. Blow it up. Here's that porch, by golly. There's two windows. Looks like two windows here. Uh, that could be a door, maybe. Or this is a window. There's a pipe going up here. And here's somebody walking around the back side of that thing, by golly. And if you looked at the first picture I had up there, back of the caboose, 
here's that doggone house again with that porch. So, you know, we looked down a little bit on that one. So here's the drawing of that building. And I don't think I have that one up here on the, on the wall. And uh, maybe we'll put this in our, uh, one of our issues coming up. And here's what Curtis came up with on his, uh, on his stuff here. So this, this is the tool house that came down from Lakeview, and here's, here's the, uh, here's the uh, car repair house. Now he has a window here and the door here, so that's something we need to work on a little bit more. Uh, I think that's about it. All right, UNR, special collections, ICC report and sketches, Kurt's, or Kent's uh, website, VNT website. Photos come from UNR, Nevada Historical Society, Nevada State Library, CSRM. Stephen Drew, Bob Dockery's uh, photos, Curtis Reed, and myself. And special thanks to Stephen and Curtis for their assistance on this project. All right. Any questions? Don't ask. <laughs> it's just loud. I feel like Curtis. <laughs> something else, you know, and then you have to go look on the maps to find out if is that, you know, if it's a basic uh, description, okay, of the building, yeah. And so that's what we come up with, because there's, there's nothing else in there that matches that, all right, that particular building. Yes, Bob? Could that barn been used to store the B&T's horses? As far as we know, I think that's what it's in there, because they had some stalls in it, yeah, uh, and, uh, a corral. I think there was a corral there too. Uh, we think we maybe uh, it got moved up to the Lakeview area, and uh, there's a picture of it that shows up uh, that looks identical to that building. And, you know, but it burned here a few years ago in one of those fires that came down off of Washington. Uh, but uh, I think Steve is going to check with the lady that owns the property and to see if that maybe if we can find out if that is the same building. Yeah, you didn't uh, have the barn in there? there? Yeah, the barn was there. But yeah, it's, we didn't talk about the barn, yeah. But I think it was a, a, the horse barn for the horses, yeah. yeah. Uh, Use later. What? Uh, did the oil uh, building have only store 55 gallon drums, or was it associated with a larger tank? I, I would presume just drums. Okay. Probably came in off of boxcars. Got unloaded from the box car and then you know rolled up to the uh, pulled up to the top. Yeah, it, it wasn't a fuel station like the oil tank down by the by the uh, engine house. Yeah, it was mainly to store oil for whatever they needed around you know uh, lubricating oil and grease and stuff like that. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. What would be the guess of the age of those trees in the yard? Repeat that. The age of the trees in the yard, what's the guess for their age? Probably from the 70s, 18th. I would think, yeah. yeah. Uh, when Charlie and I were there in, in 1916, they were, you know, they weren't that tall, but by 1950, they were a lot taller. Yeah. The answer is they were old. Yeah, but I, I would say they'd go back to, you know, old, probably day one or more, so old, but anyway. Yeah. The 75 drawing shows. shows. Huh? The 75 drawing shows a, a row of trees. There's okay, a, 70, 1875 drawing shows a row of trees. So they might have been there before that, then, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. If this evaluation was done 100 years ago, but the railroads did a lot of work, it was very detailed, very involved, why did the government want this? They wanted it from every. They wanted it from every railroad. They wanted it from every railroad, and then you know, then we went into World War One, and then the USRA took over all the railroads. So I think they used that when they went back to the view of the railroads back. That was not the reason that they did it. No, it's not the reason. I'm saying that. Yeah. So they had to 
documents what that investment was. The valuation was to determine the investment as the basis, in theory, for setting rates. In practice, it didn't work out that way, but that was the purpose. Yeah. But when, it, but when the government gave their arrows back, they had a way of knowing how much they, you know, how much they were worth. But that yeah. was a secondary. Yeah, yeah secondary. But, yeah. yeah. No, right. That wasn't until the war started. And, and originally, I thought that's what it was. But then when I got into it, I found out it wasn't. It, which Kyle was right. It wasn't that. Yeah, it wasn't for the war effort. It was, the government wanted to know how much these railroads were worth, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, and these guys were from the SP. They weren't B and T people. And some of the information, what what you read is, uh, based on Kurt's drawings. Okay, uh, I got some stuff the other day from uh, Nevada, from UNR, and some of the cross, what they call cross-section uh, drawings that they did. It says, see Kurt's drawings of the building for more detail. We've got to find Kurt's drawings. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, you know, there's other stuff out there. We just need to find it. Uh, other photographs, you know, if your relative walked around the back of the building and took a photograph, you know, that's what we need. Okay. Particularly with color. Yeah, color in 1916, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, it's been an interesting project. Uh, we still have work to do on it. And uh, we don't know where we're going. I think you're going to put yours on the website? Yeah, okay. So, so it's something, you know, a work in progress. Any other questions? Would the ICC National Records, Washington, D.C., or wherever, have any? Uh, for the records? Randy would know. He's been yeah, back there. They, the originals. they did a house cleaning about 1951 or 52, and if a railroad was completely abandoned, the records were generally thrown away. There's a few things that <laughs> were microfilmed that allowed some railroads to survive. The microfilms are about 1921 or 2. But B&T records were thrown away, so what we have from the ICC are the local records that were created when creating the ICC records. Yeah. And the records I, that stayed in existence, the, uh, the field notes do still survive, and yeah. you can get them out of the National Archives. Yeah. So which one? For, for railroads that survive. So for instance, from the Sierra Railroad, you can get the field notes okay. that they did that was the basis for the evaluation documents. Um, and that will have a lot more of the sketches and things like that. And then also some of the railroads retained some of that stuff. And then there were updates that were filed each year once the evaluation was accepted, all the way into, well, the B&T update book, the, the local copy ended up at the Mills Building in San Francisco. Um, they were clearing out there, and uh, a janitor was told, throw this thing out. And it was the update book for the B&T, and he brought it up and donated it to the Nevada State Railroad Museum. So we have that back uh, down at the... Yeah, that starts about 1924, and it goes annually from there on. Once the valuation was accepted, then they started updating the valuation. Uh -huh. And so every year, they, they tell you what changed. Yeah, I, I've seen some of that at, at UNR on, on the rolling stock and things like that, yeah. So that's that will be... Uh, for other railroads, there, there will be that also. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? All right. I think that's it then.